For cats infected with distemper, prompt treatment and intense supportive care can mean the difference between life and death. If left untreated, there is a very high chance that infected cats will die. Owners who think that their cats are displaying signs of distemper should keep the animal away from other cats and consult with a veterinarian as soon as possible. Distemper in cats, also called feline panleukopenia, FPV, is a virus that is highly contagious and potentially life-threatening. The disease affects the blood cells in the intestinal tract, bone marrow, and stem cells. It also causes anemia and other viral and bacterial illnesses. Previously one of the most common causes of death in cats, distemper is now rare due to the effectiveness of vaccines. Kittens, pregnant cats, and cats with immune disorders are most likely to be infected with distemper. What causes FPV? The FPV virus is mainly transmitted through direct contact with the blood, feces or urine of an infected cat. It can also be spread by fleas that have been feeding on a contaminated cat. Humans can inadvertently pass FPV after handling the equipment used by contaminated cats if they do not follow proper hand washing protocols. The virus can live on surfaces for up to a year and is resistant to the majority of cleaning products except for household bleach. FPV attacks the blood cells of an infected cat and in particular those in the bone marrow and intestinal tract. If the infected cat is pregnant the virus will also attack the stem cells of the unborn kitten. Additionally, FPV makes your pet more vulnerable to other viral and bacterial diseases. Symptoms of FPV The primary symptoms of FPV include but are not limited to Anemia Dehydration Depression Diarrhea, may be bloodstained High temperature Loss of appetite Rough coat Vomiting Other symptoms include lack of coordination, hiding away from owners, tucking feet away, or resting chin on the floor for prolonged periods. Diagnosis Diagnosing FPV can be tricky as many of the symptoms that present themselves can be indicative of a wide range of illnesses, such as pancreatitis or poisoning. Therefore it is necessary to undertake a combination of tests in order to give an accurate diagnosis. These tests can include but are not limited to Biochemical profiling Blood tests Physical examination Urine analysis You will also be asked to provide a comprehensive history of the health of your pet and the progression of any symptoms that they have displayed. You may also be asked to provide samples of other bodily fluids. Hello! This video is sponsored by BMix Pets. Are you looking for high-quality cat collars at an affordable cost? Check out bmixpets.com. Use coupon code KITTENLIFE to get 20% off. Treatment There is no cure for FPV itself but it is possible to treat the primary and most life-threatening complication of the virus which is dehydration. Your cat will immediately begin intravenous fluid therapy to bring their hydration levels up and restore the balance of electrolytes in their system. Antibiotics may also be prescribed in order to prevent the onset of any infections that your cat may be vulnerable to. If treatment begins within the first 48 hours of contracting the virus, the survival rate is substantially higher. Prevention is better than cure. As with most illnesses, prevention is almost certainly better than cure. Vaccinations against FPV can begin when kittens are around 7 to 9 weeks of age. They should then receive booster vaccinations at 12 to 13 weeks and 16 to 18 weeks. If you are rehoming an older cat then check with the shelter or current owner when it last had an FPV vaccination. If you are in any doubt at all then consult with your veterinarian to ensure that your pet receives the correct vaccination program for their requirements. Ongoing care Cats that are recovering from FPV should be kept in isolation for several weeks with their litter tray, food, and water all close by. Your cat will also need plenty of love and affection so ensure that you adhere strictly to thorough hand washing protocols to avoid unintentionally spreading the virus. Recovery of distemper in cats Kittens that are born with distemper or contracted prior to 8 weeks of age generally have a poor prognosis. In adult cats, signs may be mild and may go unnoticed. When the immune system is strong and proper treatment is provided, there is a very good chance for a full recovery. If a cat survives the first five days, the prognosis is very good. Once a cat has recovered, it becomes immune and cannot contract or spread the disease again. Recovering cats must be provided a quiet, warm place to rest. The food, water, and litter box should be kept close by so that the cat doesn't need to exert itself to meet its basic needs. Children and other animals should be kept away from the cat to avoid overstimulation. Depression is one of the primary signs of distemper, so owners should be sure to provide recovering cats with plenty of affection and physical contact. 
With proper care, cats typically recover and return to normal within two weeks. Owners should be careful to thoroughly wash their hands and remember that the disease is easily spread and remains on surfaces for long periods of time. Surfaces should be scrubbed down with bleach, and all of the cat's belongings including food dishes, bedding, toys, and litter box should be thrown away and replaced. If there are other cats in the home, they should be carefully observed for symptoms and owners should consult with their vet regarding vaccination. Surviving the feline distemper means your cat will be immune if it comes into contact with the virus in the future. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.